Ahoy uh, hoy, it's Lydia here from The Simpsons Theory. While I've been going crazy trying to work out Lisa Simpson's convoluted tangle of a timeline, I thought I'd take a break and do a video on a Springfieldian who is a bit more simple. The answer is the amazing Ralph. Now I know why the freak would I do a timeline on Ralph Wiggum. Well, as I found out, this little guy's had a pretty interesting life with more ups and dramatic downs than Springfield's escalator to nowhere. And despite having a taste for paste, he has run for president, obtained a clone army, and will even go on to become king of the world. So, how did this adorably dim-witted kid become a tyrannical overlord? Well, you know what to do. Perch your little butt down and let's find out. This is the complete Ralph Wiggum timeline. My cat's breath smells like cat food. Oh yeah, and before I forget, if you want more character timelines, then I've started a brand new channel called Screen Portal. Over there, I look at the entire lives of characters from Family Guy, South Park, Futurama, and even Marvel. I just released the timeline of Peter Griffin, and I have plenty more ideas planned. So if you love a good timeline video, it's a great channel to subscribe to. So thank you very much for listening, and back to the video. Ralph Wiggum's birth. Ralph Wiggum was born to Sarah and Clancy Wiggum, and together they make quite the picture-perfect family. No, really, I don't think there's a family that look this much alike. Well, maybe besides the Van Houtens. But it seems not everyone agrees, as there is a theory that Eddie could be Ralph's biological father. And why do people think this? Well, their argument being is that their hair is eerily similar. Interesting theory, and it may add up. Eddie has been Clancy's right-hand man for years so it could have been around when Ralph was conceived. However, if their hair being similar is the only argument, then it isn't very strong, seeing as Ralph would actually develop Wiggum's signature blue hair later on in life. So I'd say Ralph is definitely Clancy's son. I mean, look how cute they are. But being cute doesn't make up for the fact that Ralph isn't the sharpest tool in groundskeeper Willie's shed. Me fail English? That's impossible. As a baby, poor Ralph was dropped on his head. This stands to reason why Ralph doesn't seem like your typical buffoonish character, similarly to how Homer or even Cletus are represented. From watching the show, you'll notice it's not that Ralph is dumb, so much as his perception of the world is different and a bit warped from everyone else. His comments, while seemingly stupid, are more non sequitur. Choo 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 woo woo! Age day, present day. Like I mentioned before, Ralph isn't the brightest kid, to put it mildly. I dress myself! But gosh darn it, at least he tries. I'm learning! You can tell Ralph is a good kid with a pure heart, apart from the fact that he has an imaginary leprechaun who isn't the best influence. He told me to burn things. This brings me back to the theory that Ralph may not simply be your run-of-the-mill dumb character. Obviously, creating an imaginary friend with very sinister thoughts tell me that he's got an extremely vivid imagination with a darker side buried quite deeply. I believe that Ralph is very much in his own world, and his inane comments make perfect sense in the context of the world in his head that we aren't privy to. This would explain why, on a few occasions, Wigan mentioned that Ralph was on medication. I'm cooking for contraband! But don't feel too sorry for Ralph, as he would be nominated for President of the United States. When Springfield's presidential primary becomes the first in the nation, candidates and reporters flock to Springfield and form a bit of a frenzy. And when the townsfolk get a bit sick of all the political talk, they decide to vote in the most ridiculous way. Therefore, voting for the candidate, Ralph Wiggum. A new front runner has been crowned. He goes on to win the primary and immediately embraced as the leading candidate. Ralph becomes so popular that the Republicans and the Democrats lay down their differences in support of Ralph. Although an odd choice, Ralph isn't such a crazy candidate for president. I mean, he did play Washington in that school play and gave a very captivating performance. Maybe this role unearthed a buried hunger for power and politics. And the support he got added fuel to that fire. 
It seems that this episode showed a rare lucid side to Ralph, where the adults conspire to nominate him, and he is not only aware of the consequences of what they're doing, but manipulates the system so both parties support him too. As demonstrated through the player's Washington, he is a tremendous actor, and it's entirely possible that he has the natural ability to manipulate politics, acting stupid so that people would underestimate him. They just want to use you. Maybe I want to use them. And it's Ralph's different personalities that doesn't make him too popular, and is often showed as a typical loner. So much so that Marge sets up a play date with him and Bart out of sympathy, much to Bart's annoyance. However, Bart would become a bit more open to the friendship after discovering Ralph's father's forbidden closet of mystery. This friendship goes a bit too far and Bart becomes a bad influence after finding the master key to the entire town. Bart even persuades Ralph to take the key to raid all of the candy and toy stores. But who wouldn't? And it's not just friendship that Ralph gets out of The Simpsons, but a bit of romance too as he would later go on a date with Lisa Simpson. In another action fueled by pity, Lisa gives Ralph a Valentine's card after seeing that his letterbox is empty, and so little Ralphie is smitten. But when Ralph wears his heart on his sleeve a bit too openly by declaring his love, Lisa screams that she would never love him. Although heartbroken, Ralph rises above the otherwise embarrassing incident by performing brilliantly as President Washington. The episode would end with Lisa giving him a Let's Be Friends card and the two make amends. Let's be friends. Ralph the Teenager. So whilst at Millhouse's graduation party, we can see that Ralph has joined the army just so he can get a costume. Now that's dedication. At this age, Ralph is still stuck in the second grade. So a guest join the army is a pretty good excuse to get out of school. Age 23. A few years later on in Lisa's wedding, set 15 years in the future, we are shown a news report from Ken Brockman announcing a list of celebrities arrested that day. One of which is Sideshow Ralph Wiggum. Now it's not quite clear what may have happened or why he was arrested. Maybe he finally took on that leprechaun's advice and burned a building, or did Krusty take advantage of Ralph using his seeming idiocy as a full guy to work on his many dodgy business dealings? Come on, that crusty approved sticker doesn't mean squat. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to The Simpsons Theory. Only a small portion of you who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. And when you click that sexy red button, it lets YouTube know that you like my videos. Plus, it's free. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Age 38, Ralph the Cop. Now, it seems that Ralph's break in the clink, combined with his love for uniform, may have inspired him to step into the family business as an officer of the law. Yay, I'm fighting crime! And due to Springfield's increasing crime wave, Officer Wiggum needs some backup. But it seems that he has no buddies like Eddie or Lou to help him out, so he's been cloned. A fate we have seen time and time again to other characters down on their luck, like Mo and Homer. And overall, this seems like a pretty good idea, as Ralph has a few fatal accidents. Age 40, Ralph the Rockstar. Ralph, or at least one of the Ralph clones, is now in a rock band with Bart Simpson. Which kind of makes sense seeing as Bart was probably one of Ralph's only mates. And he would probably do anything just to hang out, even if it's learning one of the hardest instruments on the planet, the tambourine. The troublesome two now live in a shack together and so hard up on money that they use newspapers as towels. However, in this episode, it does seem that Ralph is a bit more clued up than how he was before. He's actually saying things that are related to his surroundings, as well as getting bogged down by inane things like rent. You could at least do some laundry, I pay the rent. And even though he's not thriving on life, you can see at least that he is getting a bit more normal. Aged 120, Ralph becomes king. 
Spurred on by his failed presidential campaign when he was eight years old, along with his obvious hardships of being in prison, a failed rock band, and probably seeing hundreds of himself die in many, many ways, Ralph must have worked his way up to the top, combining his growing awareness with an underlying thirst for power that has seemingly always been there. Hence going from a police officer to becoming, well, king. Not bad for someone who ate Play-Doh as a kid. This really does make me feel that with age, Ralph started to let his love for power thrive. However, his treacherous son would poison him and claim the throne. And so putting an end to King Ralph's reign, his reign over what country, planet or town, I don't know, but his reign all the same. And so that ends the Ralph Wiggum timeline. What's your favourite Ralph Wiggum moment? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, I'd like to say a huge thank you to my newest Flying Hellfish members, Paul McPherson, Oliver Camlin, Henry Pierce, Frank Smith and Luca Z. Thank you so much for helping support the channel, I really, really, really do appreciate it. And of course, a big thank you to my other lovely Flying Hellfish members. We have Timothy, who else but Zane, Liam, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Andre, Stefan, Vincent, Robert, Ashley, Kevin, Glenford, Devin, Gadrak, Stephen, Edward, Anthony, Nicola, Nerdcentric, Jeffrey, Stephen, Valentine, Dominic, Cody, Kim, Aaron, Jacku Star, Gameboss49, Chaz, Jeff, Gil, Shadu, Murray, Paul, Oliver, Henry, Frank, and Lucas Z.